Hello and welcome to my second tutorial offering mathematical support for students studying the Open University module TM111 an introduction to computing and information technology and today we're going to be looking at rounding numbers to a certain number of decimal places. Remember as technologists we have to be comfortable with handling numbers doing calculations and expressing our answers in a sensible format. So the idea of these tutorials is to, to assist TM111 students with the mathematics of handling big and small numbers and presenting them in a meaningful way. Today it's about decimal places and we see decimal places all the time. Here are three of the world's leading currencies, the pound, the dollar, the euro. They've all got one thing in common. They're what are called cent currencies. That is, there's a hundred smaller units in each of these currencies. So there's a hundred cent to the euro, there's a hundred cent to the dollar. But we have a hundred pence to our British pound. So we're used to seeing decimal places in our prices. But we also are used to seeing decimal places when we reach for our calculators. When we do calculations, we're multiplying, dividing numbers. And often we end up with an answer with lots and lots and lots of decimal places. But how many of these are really meaningful? And if you're trying to express an answer to a reader or to a listener, you don't really want to quote lots and lots of decimal places because the person will just turn off. I said we use decimal places in our currency. So well, I might go shopping and buy three kilograms of potatoes. And that might cost £2.85. I might buy 50 litres of petrol. And that might cost £56.72. The three and the 50 are what are called whole numbers. In mathematics, we call them integers. My price is 2.85 and 56.72. And these are decimal numbers because they contain that decimal point. When we look at a number, we can see that it's broken up into two parts. There's the sort of number to the left of the decimal point and numbers to the right of the decimal point. In my previous video, we looked at significant numbers and the, the number to the left is the most significant and the one to the right is the least significant. Now, when we look at decimal places, we ignore the big numbers to the left of the decimal point. We're only going to be focusing on numbers that follow that decimal point. So here I've got four decimal numbers, five, six, two, three. The five represents a tenth of a unit the sixth a hundred, the two a thousandth. So already we're getting to very, very, very small detail with this sort of number. And so therefore, if we want to present it, perhaps that level of, of accuracy here is not really needed in conveying to my reader or my listener uh, the size of this number. So therefore, we're going to be looking at rounding these to sensible values. So we have to have decimal places or decimal numbers or fractional numbers because not everything is actually in our world can be measured in whole numbers. We have to look at fractional parts and the decimal places do actually sort of show a level of accuracy and precision in our in our calculations. But really, when we when we want to show an answer, we really just want to sort of show a feel for the answer. So we very often want to limit ourselves to a certain number of decimal places. Now, when I look at my decimal point, everything to the right becomes a decimal part of my number. The first figure is the first decimal place. The second is the second decimal place. When I looked at significant figures, I said the, the zero wasn't significant. In this case, when we look at decimal points, it is significant. So whether it's a zero or any other number in that first column, that is my first decimal place. So let's have a look at some examples. Now we, we're going to apply a strategy and the strategy we've met already is the same strategy we used when we looked at how we rounded up or rounded down significant numbers. So when I'm asked to round a number to a certain number of decimal places, my strategy is very simple. I always look for one after the number I'm interested in. So if I'm rounding a number to two decimal places, I'm going to be looking at the third decimal place. In this case, it's a two. And now I'm going to apply the following strategy. If the number is five or more, we round up. Otherwise, we round down. Here it's a two. So therefore, that's less than five. So I'm going to round this number down. 
and I get my final answer of 5.61. But afterwards, I always put in brackets the level in which I'm presenting my number. So here I'm going to say two, two decimal places. My next number, I want to round to three decimal places. So let's apply the strategy. I want to round to three, so therefore I shall look at the fourth one. The fourth one is a five. I apply my strategy. Is the digit five or more? Yes, it is. In this case, I shall round up. So that means I'm going to add one to the previous digit. So the five is big. The, the, the five is added one to the three, and I get the answer of 0 0.004. And again, afterwards, I'm going to show the level of accuracy to three decimal places. This again, remember, conveys to the reader the number has been rounded. Just let's finish off by looking at some more examples with a rather special one at the end. Simple one here, 51.3219. Strategy, very simple. Look at the third decimal place. It's one, not five or more. So here I shall simply uh, round down. And my answer is 51.32 to two decimal places. My, third, my second number here, the third decimal point place is a seven. That's bigger than five. So here I shall round up. So my 0.267 becomes 0.27. My six gets rounded up to a seven. My next number is 0 0.0193. My third place is a nine. That's bigger than five. So therefore I'm going to again round up and this number becomes 0 0.02. And again, I'm showing the level of accuracy by putting after my number to two decimal places. Now, just to finish off, just a little tricky number here. Uh, my third number, my third decimal place is a seven. I want my number to two decimal places. Is it five or more? Yes, so I'm gonna round up. I shall add one to the nine, but that becomes a 10. And that means I'll put another one onto the other nine, that becomes a 10. And so I'll get my final answer of being 1.00 to two decimal places. Notice I have actually put 00, zero to show the two decimal places. Although there's no numbers there, I do need to show that they are zero. So don't forget to add those zeros if you round up and you actually end up with lots of zeros there. My final last slide is a warning. Remember, don't use rounded numbers in any further calculation. We only use rounded numbers when we're trying to convey to a reader or a listener the size of my number. OK, if I do need that number in further calculations, I must go and should do go back to my accurate number, my number with all the decimal places. Further resources can be found on my website, uh, whose URL is given there. Uh, and there's for more support material on decimal places uh, on that website. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you.